Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let's take a look at some uses for live photos. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you can read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So when you have live photos turned on on your iPhone and you take a photo, you're actually capturing everything from one and a half seconds before you took the photo to one and a half seconds after you took the photo. You turn it on with this little button here in the upper right hand corner. If that's on, you'll see it'll indicate live there for a second, you're taking a live photo. To turn it off, you tap there again and you turn it off. So when you turn it on, it's actually recording from the camera while you're moving your iPhone around. And when you take the shot, it actually uses the last one and a half seconds and the next one and a half seconds and records all of that. It's not as simple as a photo and then some video around it. It's actually a photo and then the changes for each frame before and after it. So each frame of this three seconds is actually its own individual photo with all the pixels there. This makes it extremely useful in a number of ways. So I'm going to look at using this on the Mac in the Photos app but you can do most of this in the Photos app on your iPhone as well. So here you can see I've got a live photo and it says so with the upper left hand corner. If I move my pointer over it, it actually plays that video including sound. Now it will just play it through once and I can move my pointer off and move it back on again to get it to play again. But that's not all it does. One of the things you could do is you could take all this video and you could turn it into a loop. So I'll go to Edit here and under the Adjust tab there you'll see the options at the bottom left hand corner and I could switch from Live to Loop. And what Loop will do is it will turn the entire thing into a loop. Now notice how it zoomed in a bit. What it's going to do is not just loop the video. It's much more than that. It's actually stabilizing the video. It's looking at some of the items around here like the rocks and it's stabilizing the entire thing. Otherwise you would just get this jittery kind of loop. So you get the running water here at the bottom. You get the continuously flowing waterfall. It actually fades the end of the three seconds back into the beginning and it works great for water. So here's another photo and there's actually no big waterfall or anything in this. But if I move my pointer over the live there you can see how the water is rippling as water does. You can also see how I'm moving around a lot. I'm not on a tripod. I'm just holding this with my hand. So if I go in here and I change this to loop. Notice how it will stabilize everything so the statue and the background are stable. But the water ripples and fades in and it looks like the water is just continuously flowing or reacting to the breeze here and it creates this kind of nice moving image. Even the traffic here in the background seems to kind of work in this case. But another option is long exposure. Let's go here and change instead of to loop to long exposure. And it's going to stabilize just like before. So it zooms in a little bit. But then it's going to take all the frames of the moving parts, in this case the water, and it's going to create a long exposure effect. So what you get here is the equivalent to a long exposure except you don't need the tripod. This is taken handheld. Everything else is stabilized and the running water parts are using all the different frames to create the long exposure effect. Now another aspect of live photos is that when you go to Edit and you're in Adjust here you've got the entire three seconds of video here. So you can go back and forward and choose any frame out of these. Remember it's remembering the differences between the frames. So it's not like this frame here is a photo and this is just part of lower resolution video. Not at all. You can reassign the main photo to be any one of these frames. This helps a lot when you're photographing say animals because animals aren't going to stand there and pose perfectly for you and wait for you to take the photo. So you can instead sample three seconds of reality and take the shot that actually makes the most sense. So you may find like this is the better shot or maybe something along here. And then I can simply click Make Key Photo and that's now the regular photo. The one I would see if I would just look at this as a still image or share it or print it. So getting a photo like this of my dog it seems like he just posed for it. But in fact of course he's doing this during the entire three seconds. And I was able to capture all of this and grab just the perfect frame. Or maybe I decide that this is the perfect frame. Anyway I want to do it I can reassign the key photo. And by the way if you want to grab multiple frames as photos you can. So I can take this one here, go to Image and then duplicate one photo. 
And when I do that with a live photo it's going to give me the option to duplicate as a still photo. So I can take this frame out as a regular photo, go in, pick a new keyframe, and then do that again to get another photo from that same single live photo. Of course this also works for humans. We've all been in the situation where we've posed for a photo or maybe taken a selfie and we're not quite sure exactly how to smile or look or point our eyes or anything like that. So you can do a live photo, get something like this, and you can see how I'm moving my head around. And I can go in here later on and adjust to get the perfect shot of myself. And that works particularly well if the person isn't posing. Like say you're at a gathering and you want to take a picture of your friends. You don't want to ask them to stop what they're doing and pose for a photo. So maybe you take a picture of your friends talking and use a live photo. That gives you three seconds worth of images to be able to get the perfect one where nobody is blinking or has their mouth half open, that kind of thing. This also works great for other objects that continue to animate. For instance, here we've got a fire. So you can grab the best version here with the best bit of flame. Flags are another great example. When traveling I love to take pictures of flags, especially on beautiful days when they're waving in the wind, but you know, usually end up with something like that or something like that. But when using live photos you have a large number of different frames to get a perfect sample from. Fireworks are another great way to use live photos. Not only do you actually get a little sample of the fireworks with the sound, but you can kind of find the perfect frame to choose from. Or you could use one of these. You could have a loop and then it just makes it look like fireworks just going on all the time. You can use a long exposure and it doesn't work particularly great for this photo but sometimes for a large firework going off filling the sky it does. Amusement parks are another great place to use this when trying to catch a friend going by on a roller coaster or on a merry-go-round or something like that. You can use a live photo to get like the perfect shot. And I'd save the best for last. Live photos let you easily take pictures of lightning. In the past in order to take pictures of lightning you basically have to sit there with your camera ready to go, poised, and as soon as you see that lightning you take the shot as quickly as you can and hope you are fast enough. But with live photos you're grabbing the frames from one and a half seconds before. So you just casually stand there with your iPhone pointing at the sky and when you see it light up you click the shutter button. Then you can go back in time and forward in time and find that frame that actually shows the lightning. Sometimes you get several different frames so it looks pretty cool. And thanks to the modern iPhone's ability to take really good night shots you can easily capture lightning using live photos. I'm going to leave you with a couple of tips. If you ever want to use those three seconds of a live photo as a video, say in an iMovie project, you can go to File, Export, and then Export Unmodified Original, and then export it somewhere. Let's go ahead and just export this to the desktop. And then what you're going to get is the still frame, the one chosen as the primary frame there, but also a video. Now another tip is that if you want to share these as a gift you can. The Mac version of Photos makes this easy. First you have to remember to set it to loop or bounce. This won't work if it's just set to live. So if you change it to loop first then you go to File and then under Export you'll have Export GIF. And you can export a GIF version of this and here it is on the desktop and you can see it's a little looping animated GIF that now most social media networks and sharing it in an email and all that will make it work like a video. There are lots of other little reasons to use live photos. For instance you get that little bit of audio so if you just want to remember kind of the flavor of what's going on in the room at the time then that's really helpful say at a party or a concert or something like that. Also they're really useful for taking blind photos like if you have to use your iPhone around a corner or hold it at an odd angle and you can't really see what it is you're photographing, taking a live photo and kind of gently moving your phone a little bit as you take the photo, not too quickly, then you have a better chance of actually getting the photo you're aiming for. So if you found this useful, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.